there's a lot of books these days on the power of manifestation. And that's wonderful. And yes, absolutely, our thoughts create our reality. But they create our reality in a couple of very specific ways. So one way they create our reality is because we literally see the world that first takes place in our minds and then project it out. If I believe that the world is unsafe and cannot be trusted and that people are out to harm you and steal from you and cheat you, you can be sure that that's exactly what I'm going to get in my life. Because I have subconsciously, unconsciously actually made that happen. It's what I'm expecting to happen. And I end up actually living in such a way, thinking in such a way, sending out thought energy in such a way, that this is actually what I end up getting. And it goes the other way. If what I believe is that the world absolutely can be trusted and that people are going to love me and be nice to me and take care of me, that's actually what I, what I bring forth in the world. It's how I move through the world. And unconsciously, subconsciously, it's what I draw out of other people. It's why, haven't you ever noticed that when you're around some people, you feel like, I don't really like myself around that person. Somehow, for some reason, around that person, I act in ways, I speak in ways that are just not in my highest truth, in my highest love, my highest peace. And God, being around those people, I really feel like I am my best self around that person. Right? We've had these experiences. Now, you're the same. But interestingly, different people draw different things out of you based on what they are projecting, expecting the world to be. So that's, that's one way, and that's only one little example of how that aspect works. But that whole piece is literally, I take my inner world, I project it into the outer world. That becomes the world that I live in. Whether it's because I've actually impacted people around me to behave the way that I think they will, or whether it's just that I continue to interpret people's actions and words in exactly the way that I believe they will be. This is why we say, jase drishti vese shishti. As is my vision, so is the world. As I expect the world to be, so it is. It works energetically, it works unconsciously, it works in all kinds of ways, depending on from the most literal physical energy down to the or up to this cosmic level of our creation of our life and experience. But another way that it works is that which I think about all the time tends to be that which I do and therefore that which bears fruit in my life. So for example, if I, God, I just want to be rich. All I want is to be rich. Like, since I was young, I just want to be rich. Well, chances are, I'm going to choose a profession that's got a really good chance of making me rich. Chances are, I'm going to not spend so much time with my friends, with my loved ones, meditating in spiritual practices, because I've got to get rich. I'm going to be the 100-hour workweek person because I'm going to get that first promotion. I'm going to be the youngest vice president. I'm going to be this. I'm going to do that because I've got to get rich. So it's not that simply thinking about money has somehow made money manifest. 
It's that thinking about money has led to a series of choices and decisions and behaviors that has brought money into my life. Most things in the world, not everything, but most things in the world, if you really want to achieve them and you're really prepared to work hard for them, to give your time and your energy for them, most things are achievable. But not simply because I thought about it and then it happened, but because my thoughts led to actions. And those actions have karmic fruits, karmic repercussions. So that's the yes of manifestation. Absolutely. If you see it, if you picture it, there's a very good chance it's going to come in your life, whether because you're projecting that out and literally energetically creating that world, or because it occupies your mind so much that this is how you live, and so it happens. What doesn't happen, or certainly doesn't happen with the level of frequency that a lot of these books would like you to think, is that I sit here and I meditate on money, and I chant a money mantra, money, 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 oh money, and I open my eyes, and there is a mound of money in front of me. That doesn't happen. Now, something deeper does happen, though. If my prayer, instead of money, 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 is abundance, 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 and if I'm open as I meditate, to the fact that abundance may not come in the form of money. Something very beautiful happens, which is I may have begun thinking I'm going to meditate in order to have more so that I feel abundant. But through my meditation, I realize how full I already am because I let go of this identification with just the physical body. And so suddenly I'm sitting here in meditation, nothing in my bank account has changed, but suddenly I've gone from being poor to being rich. Because how I feel about my bank account has changed. When I started my meditative practice, I felt like I have nothing, not enough, need more. I feel impoverished. But through my meditative practice, I touch a, an abundance that is so much that I realize I am so full. So that does happen. That's really what the grace of the divine gives us. If you've got, if you've got that many hours to spend in meditation, getting your manifesting power down, spend that time figuring out who you are. It's going to serve you much better. Because one of the things that the power of prapti or a manifestation cannot give you is awakening or enlightenment or liberation can manifest lots of things. You can attract lots of things. Not happiness, not peace, not love, not awakening. So I'd say don't worry about it. You have what you're supposed to have. Work hard for that which you want. But ultimately recognize that who you are is full and powerful.